Okay, um, M1, June 2017, the GCE paper, question number eight. Um, two particles A and B have masses 2M and M respectively. The particles are attached to the ends of a light inextensible string. Particle A is held at rest on a fixed rough horizontal table at distance D from a small smooth light pulley which is fixed at the edge of the table at point P. The coefficient of friction between the table and A is mu, where mu is less than a half. So they didn't give us the exact value of mu, but they told us that mu is less than a half. Mu is less than a half. Okay. Um, the string is parallel to the table from A to P and passes over the pulley. Particle B hangs freely at rest vertically below P with the string taut and at a height H where H is less than D. That means A will reach the pulley. Um, you know, it won't. It won't be stopped reaching the pulley before this hits the ground. Okay, H, that that distance is less than that distance. So when B hits the ground, A still hasn't reached the pulley. Basically, above a horizontal floor, as shown in Figure Three, particle A is released from rest with the string taut and slides along the table. Write down the equation of motion for A. Okay, so let's just put in all the forces that we have here. So you have the reaction force. You have the the weight, 2mg here, and that's the reaction force, which will be equal to 2mg. And here you've got the weight of this, which is mg. You have the tension in the string here, and the tension pulling along over there. Um, okay, so write down the equation of motion for A. So for A, there's a friction acting as well, which is opposing the motion, so the friction is acting in this direction here, and it's reached its maximum value because it's moving. Okay, so for A, we can say T minus FM is accelerating this direction. So we can say T minus FM is equal to MA. So for, for, for part one, we can say T minus maximum friction is equal to MA. Okay, so M is 2, 2M actually. 2MA. That's from F equals MA. Okay, so we can work out what Fm is because I know that R is equal to 2mg and Fm, well, it's going to be mu times R. So it's mu times 2mg, but we don't know what mu is. So I guess we, can, we can't really write that. And then we can say just T minus mu times, so you can say 2 times mu mg, maybe. 2 times mu times mg equals 2ma. So that's the equation of motion for A and for B. The equation of motion is moving down. So we take down the positive mg minus t equals ma. Take down the positive mg minus t equals ma. Okay. Then it says um, that's part A. That's part A one and two done. Okay. Then it, part part B says. Hence show that until B hits the floor, the acceleration of A is given by G over 3, 1 minus 2 mu. Okay, let me just take these equations that we just formed. Because we're going to use them, of course. Put these on the other page. Make them a bit smaller. All right, whoops. Okay, so we got these two equations. So um, what I can do is, is that right? What is it? T minus F, mg minus T. Did I put T minus mg? mg minus T, yeah. mg minus T. That's the one. So this is equation one. This is equation one, and this is equation two. So if I do equation one plus equation two, the T's will be eliminated. So let's, let's keep equation one, this one. If I add them together, the T's will be eliminated. So I'm going to have mg minus 2 mu times mg equals 2 ma. Equals 3 ma, sorry. Add them together. 3 ma. Okay, 2 ma plus ma is 3 ma. Okay, what's going to happen is the m's will cancel out. So I'm left with g minus 2 um mu times g equals 3a and you can see here 
that what's going to happen is if I take g as common, I'll have 1 minus 2 mu equals a 3a, so I can just divide by 3, so I get exactly this. g over 3, so you can write it in the same form if you want, g over 3 times 1 minus 2 mu. Okay, so we've done part b. Then it says, find in terms of g, h, and mu the speed of a at the instant when b hits the ground. Okay, so let's see the situation. When b hits the ground, it travels a h distance of h. Okay, so when b hits the ground, let's just, you've got suvat here. Suvat, the distance is traveled is h. Okay, because it tells you here that the distance is traveled when it hits the ground is h. Okay, the initial speed is zero because it was released from rest. The final speed is what we have to find. The acceleration is given by what we just have here. Okay, the acceleration of A is this. So you've got G over 3. G over 3, 1 minus 2 mu. And I don't think we need the time. We can use V squared equals U squared plus 2 AS. Okay, so we can say V squared equals U squared, which is 0 squared, plus 2 times G over 3. 1 minus 2 mu times h. Okay, so v squared is going to be 2 thirds or 2g over 3 times h times 1 minus 2 mu. So v will be the square root of all of that. 2 over 3gh 1 minus 2 mu. So now for part D, um, and this particular part of the question here, we've got I've just put the diagram here. This is your F max. It says um, after B hits the floor, A continues to slide along the table. Given that mu equals a third and that A comes to rest at P, find D in terms of H. Okay, so now what's happened is B has hit the floor. It's traveled a distance of H. So A also travels a distance of H. Okay, so it's travel this distance h. Okay, this is where a is when b hits the floor. Okay, now, once b hits the floor, this string is now slack. So the tension is gone. No more tension. Okay, now d ha a has left to travel until p, d minus h, a distance of d minus h. That's the distance it's got left to travel. And it does travel that distance, it comes to us at p. But it has initial speed. At this point, which is the same as the final speed of V at that point. They're, they're connected by the same string. So at the point where B hits the ground, A is traveling at the same speed as B. Okay, so B hit the ground at the speed, which we worked out, 2 thirds GH, 1 minus 2 mu. Okay, so the velocity of A at this point here, call it dash, is equal to 2 thirds. Sorry, what was it again? 2 thirds GH, 1 minus 2 mu. 2 thirds gh 1 minus 2 mu and that's square rooted and we know that mu is equal to a third they've told us so let's just put that in there so you got the square root of 2 thirds times gh 1 minus 2 thirds 1 minus 2 thirds okay 1 minus 2 thirds is 1 third so you end up with the square root of 2gh over 9. Okay, so that's the velocity of A at the point where it's started, uh, when B has hit the ground. So you can call that the initial velocity of A, okay, and the new situation that arises here where there's no tension. Now, when there's no tension in the string, okay, let me just do this over here. When there's no tension in the string, the acceleration, of course, won't be the same for A, it will be different because the only force acting on A now is fm f max and f max was given by if we go back f max was given by 2 mu mg 2 mu mg so f max is 2 mu mg and we know that mu is equal to one third as i told us given that mu equals one third so that's going to be two thirds mg so we can say that the force acting on a is two thirds mg in this direction. So if we consider, if we consider the acceleration or the the equation of motion for a now, 
F equals MA. Well, the only force acting on it is acting in the opposite direction to its moving. So it's two thirds MG negative equals MA. And the mass of A is 2M. So 2M A. So therefore we can say A is equal to minus one third G. That's the acceleration in this system now. Minus one third G. So we can now use SUVAT. S, the distance it has to travel once the straight once b has reached the ground is d minus h its initial speed is given by uh, this which is the square root of 2 gh over 9 the final speed is zero because it comes to rest at p the acceleration is minus one third g and t we don't need so we can again use v squared equals u squared plus 2 a s Okay, so v squared so you got 0 equals u squared. That's just going to give you 2gh over 9 plus 2 times acceleration, which is minus 1 third g times the distance it's travel, which is d minus h. So let's see what happens here. You've got 0 equals 2gh over 9 minus 2 thirds times g times d plus two thirds times g times h okay that times that okay looks like we're getting somewhere now if i uh, these two can combine together that's like uh, that's like four over nine uh, no uh, if i multiply this by three i multiply this by three that's like six over nine okay that's six over nine plus two over nine that's 8 over 9. So you have 0 equals 8 over 9 gh minus 2 thirds gd. And we want to find, it says find d in terms of h. So d equals something h. d equals something with h in it. Let's move this down for a second. So d equals something with h in it. Okay. So I can rearrange this. So let me just... Well, if I divide both sides by G, the G goes, right? So I'm going to have 2 thirds D equals 8 over 9 H. So, well, divide by 2, that becomes 4. Divide by 3, that becomes 3. So D is equal to 4 thirds of H. And there has the answer for that question. And then it says, describe what would happen if mu equals a half. Okay, if mu equals a half, let's go back to here. If mu equals a half, then this would become, the velocity a would be zero, wouldn't it? Because that would be one minus two times a half. So one minus one, which is zero. So zero times that. So that basically means um, it wouldn't have started moving. That's what it means. Okay, so you can say that um, when mu equals a half, the system wouldn't move would not start moving okay let's see what other things we can see from that if if mu equals a half then the friction would be um, equal to mg and if the friction is equal to mg that would be mg and that would be yeah, I think it would be in limiting equilibrium. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't have started moving yet. Okay, the system won't move. I think that's perfectly fine as your answer. The system won't move. It's worth one mark. I don't need an elaborate calculation for that. You can see from the velocity, um, that makes it zero, doesn't it? Put a half there. So the system won't move is perfectly fine, I think. And there we have the uh, uh, end of that question.